so this is Erwin. Erwin is one of two of our Parentes. Parentes are Australia's largest varanid. Also, he is, they are the fourth largest in the world. These guys reach nine plus feet. Crazy. How big is he? Uh, tip of the nose to tip of the tail, I'd guess probably about six. What's up, Snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. Today I'm heading over to Thai Park's Iguana Land. That's right. I got to go pick up my Galapagos tortoises that I bought. I bought a pair of them. Hopefully they'll be a pair. Uh, two little baby ones from him a few weeks ago. I never picked them up. Uh, I finally going to go get them. And hopefully we're going to have some more monitor encounters. That's right. One of his guys there is going to hopefully take me into some uh, enclosures. We're going to see some monitors up close. My favorite that I really want to take a look at is the Parenti monitor. Obviously, I love the Croc monitor. I love them all. So hopefully, we're going to have a really good experience. So guys, stay tuned. We're heading over to Iguana Land. Next time you see me, I might be inside a dinosaur's enclosure. So just like Dexter down there, that is what her natural colors would basically look like when she's out, if she was a normal looking animal. But because she was a breeder, she was bred to look like this, and she produced her own as far as I know. Oh, yeah. She's an ex-breeder, so one year she got egg-bound and it damaged her, so they had to go in and remove stuff so she could no longer be bred. So she was generously donated to us as an education animal. What's she doing right now? So what she's doing right now is she's smelling, checking out the environment. Much similar to a snake, they have a lot of nerves on that tongue to help them pick up smells, pick up tastes in the air, and really pick up what's going on. Now their nose, their nose also is a great, great nose. They can smell stuff for miles. Uh, there's been cases of uh, at Komodos uh, raiding where dead things have been buried and just going digging down and pulling them out of the ground. So, Komodos are just extra large of these guys. Is she a herbivore also? No, she is a predator, so she is full-on carnivorous. So, she, what we feed her here is mice, quail, rats, stuff like that, to keep her going. All right. Here's, <laughs> he, he just ate a little while ago and you got, you, you're pretty brave because he's got some pretty sharp claws, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, very sharp. <laughs> All right, so this is Erwin. Erwin is one of two of our Parentes. Parentes are Australia's largest varanid. Also, he is, they are the fourth largest in the world. These guys reach nine plus feet. Crazy, how big is he? Uh, tip of the nose to tip of the tail, I'd guess probably about six. He's got a little ways to go. Maybe, maybe not even that much. Maybe just five. How old is this guy? Uh, he is six or seven. I cannot oh, cool. remember which. We've had him for about four years, three or four years. Yeah. Do you find that they go in, they like the water feature? Do they go in the water a lot? Or are they he more? Yeah, he doesn't spend much time in it. Gotcha. Our other currency spends even less time in the water. Mm. But out of the two, Erwin spends more time in the water. But, mm -hmm. you know, on a weekly basis, I see him in the water maybe once. They're not like water monitors or? No, not, a, not at all. This is a desert species. Right. These guys are. And what are you feeding these guys? Uh, I feed him, I fed him today some chicks and some quail. But uh, we do give him uh, rats every every now and then. But they're really fatty, so you don't need them as often. Yeah. Did you do quail at all or chickens? Quail and chicks, yep. Okay. There he is. He's like, it's hot out here. We gotta get some, we get in the shade over here. What a beautiful, beautiful lizard. So now where'd this guy come from? Which, same zoo? Same zoo. These guys both came from uh, Dallas Zoo, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. They were amazing gifts. Oh yeah. They, uh, oh, they gifted them to you guys. Wow. Yeah. Do they have a lot of uh, these guys there? Uh, they are they are one of the only zoos in the states that successfully breed them. So <sighs> I'm sure they had a couple extras. Right. Of course, they give you two males. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's so funny. They the, so the story was they thought the three that they were giving away mm -hmm. were all three males. Mm -hmm. Turns out 
after they sent sent, sent them mm-hmm. the the other one that we didn't get ended mm-hmm. up being a female and oh, no. um that zoo that that ended up with that female right. ended up breeding them like a few years later oh really wow like first time ever cool with that female that yeah. they were given yeah all right Gio. i'll see you later buddy he's like it's hot we're just gonna <laughs> just chill out this is a t positive albino water monitor unlike my t negatives i have at home he's nice though he's got some really nice color he has uh, some nice pattern when he's nice and clean when he's not rolling around in the mud yeah he's, uh, he's got some really bright yellow stuff pop out his, it, his spots come it out. seems like that when these guys get older they almost look like t negatives yeah they it's it's hard to tell them apart uh kevin curly said that yeah yeah i mean th- th- for people don't know th- this is dirty so if you look where he's chatting, you can tell how light he is underneath there, like under his underarm right there. They get really, really, really light. Yeah, you see what I mean? Nice tongue flicks. Like, he's yeah. he's not bad. He's just a he's little He's pretty unsure. good. They don't usually let you touch them on the back. They like to rather under the chin, usually, as far as I'm concerned. As far as he's I know. just a little un- unsure. Yeah. That's all. He Beautiful. barely even get his neck puffing up. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to even worry about opening the cage up. I mean, he's not, like, springing out and right. trying to escape yeah. or anything like that. That, I wanted to I want to keep mine outside, but I'm always like wondering like if I open the cage door and they get out, I'll never catch them. I've got a Simbawa at home. It's only about Is 10 it? inches long. Uh, He's not going outside. For no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah. You think they're better when they're when they're older? What's that? As far as like you know having better temperament, ma- temperament and mannerism wise. Um, yeah, I think you you have a I think you have a better chance of getting them to where you want them be, right. want them to be if you start young. Right. But. Uh, yeah, I think bigger lizards are just more confident in themselves. Yeah, you calm know, down. They, they don't feel bit. the need to defend themselves. That's right. Right, right, That's right. A little baby boy. Yeah. Very cool. All right, we're looking for our Dumeril's boa here. A little bedded down in there, probably trying to keep cool. It's oh, a hot yeah. day here today. I always love to stay cool. You know, you'll never see them sitting in the heat unless they right. eat or something like that. I only see our red tails basking like first thing. Do in you the really? Morning. Wow. Very first thing in the morning, like seven to eight o'clock. Nine o'clock rolls around, they're they're gone. Do you guys put any heat in here for the, uh, for the over space? the winter? Yeah. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, but we don't keep it in here over the summertime. What do you guys use for heat in here? Just a heat mat or something? Uh, it's a Zoomed habitat heater oh. inside a. Uh, uh, a little hide box. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, that way we can lock them inside because right. you know these animals. They, they they think they know best. They'll come out and, and uh, then they die. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, you know, for, for a monitor or for some species of snakes, that's a that's a death sentence. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Sometimes they go in the water bowl and they'll freeze to death in the water bowl. Yeah, yeah. yep. They'll come out and, and shock themselves yeah. in the water bowl. She's in a nice shed, this little girl. She's like. getting there. She's, uh, she's definitely a little cloudy on the underside here. But, uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. She's a little Dear dark world. today, for sure, but... Was she donated? Uh, I actually don't know her story. She's been uh. here longer than I have. I've, uh, <laughs> I'm going on three years here. Wow, all right, and, she's, um, she's an original. Yeah, she's been here as long as I have. Yeah, look really, at that little baby girl. Beautiful. I love her eyes, just yeah. amazing, amazing. I have a lot of bows, I don't have any Dumerals. Probably have to get a pair of those at some point. Dumerals are coming up, they're, they're, they're pretty pricey. They're on expensive, the... I noticed, yeah. yeah, yeah. For you know, for something with no morph, you know, it, it is somebody expensive. somebody offer me 1.2 for 400, and I'm wow. biting, my, biting myself now, like, damn. Yeah, you should have grabbed them, yeah. Very nice, very cool. Love the enclosure, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This is our female croc. She's a sweetheart. Her name is Hilfy. Oh, it's okay. Can I sneak this out from under you? She's pretty big. She's decent size. Average size for a female, I'd say. Yeah. And it's funny, because usually they say the males are, are, are nicer. Let's see if she eats that quail. I've been doing a lot of quail with my, li- with my lizards and monitors, too. They seem to like it. Oh, yeah. I think it's much better. It's like... It's like, would, would you, should we eat hamburgers as people every meal, or would we be better off eating, you know, chicken or fish, right. you know, that kind of thing? Right. <laughs> so these guys come from Papua New Guinea. This is the world's longest species of monitor, uh, reaching up to 12 to 13 feet. Our guy next door, I would say, is about eight. The males are a little bigger, yeah. Yeah. She's like, I don't know if I really want this. Takes her time. This is standard procedure yeah. for her. I think, 
Yeah, and they definitely, you can tell, they're arboreal for sure. These things like oh, yeah. to climb, you, you know. You should see, like, I when I'm in here feeding her, I, I'm running her all over these logs. She, it's, it's almost difficult to keep the food away. She, <laughs> she is that good in the trees. I mean, just look at these, look at these claws. But I'm yeah. saying, that's why, it, it, unless you have an ability to build something where you have, they have the ability to climb, and it's almost like not even right for it's, these things. Yeah, it's you know? far from ethical. Yeah. It's just they're so you could see she's so happy up in this this, this big tree branch. She's yeah. confident. She's comfortable. Yeah. Really cool. All right, we're gonna get to see a rock iguana up close. This is Downey. He's like a bodybuilder. This guy. Look at those yeah. jowls. Stocky. So I'll sit them right here on this table here for you guys. Okay. Absolutely. That's Just a rocket one. Yeah. That's all I ask. You, so this you'd is. You'd be surprised what they feel like. Really, they feel like. Like felt. Yeah, like a velvet on them. Yeah. Head. Look at this guy. Isn't that neat? What a cutie. Yes, So this is a very, very rare animal. This is a critically endangered species, mm -hmm. the Anagata rock iguana. There are only about there are only eleven in the United States, and there are only about three hundred left in the wild. Wow! Um, these guys suffer from habitat loss as well as invasive species such as cats and dogs, fire ants, things like that. All right. Rats. The one thing I didn't ask about it, I see he has very short. Mm -hmm. They look like teeth almost. Yep. But when you touch them, they're not sharp. Is that what you're sh you're showing me? No, no, no. They're 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 fairly they're fairly sharp. Oh, uh, no, nothing like anything that would go through your skin. Though. No, no. Uh, now they do get a little more stocky and sturdy down here. Mm -hmm. A little more sharp uh, down towards the tail. But these aren't meant to impale you. Uh, th these are meant to. Is this to, the uh, first time you've touched it? Uh, I've, I've touched these before, but not this this particular guy. He's a cutie. He is, isn't he sweet? Now is Ty breeding these guys? We are attempting to. We haven't had success yet, but uh, now, if you're hopes breeding, are still high. If you're breeding, if this is the he, yeah. Where is the female? Uh, we actually have the female out back. She's not on display. Um, so out of the eleven in the United States, only four are females. Uh, oh and out of gosh. that four, so you guys got three. half. <laughs> uh, out of that four, only three are breedable, and we have all three of them. Wow. So, but she's not interested. No, no, no. Downey is definitely interested. So the entire interested. future of these things is dependent on Ty. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. So he's interested. She's not interested. Yeah, she, she's, the, the females the are. The she's are not interested. Yeah, yeah. And we have three oh. males to go with them, so. And he's uh, so sweet. I mean, he came right up the glass last they'll time. They'll crack the code. They'll crack it. He is a he is a sweetheart. All right, I was at Thai Parks the other day. I don't know if you guys have seen any of my Instagram videos uh, on it, and uh, I got some more videos coming out as well. Some of the stuff we filmed there, but I picked up my pair of Galapagos baby tortoises that I bought from him the other day. I had to pick them up. Still, this is our female right here, or we what we think was incubated to be a female. And then my male is under there somewhere. Where is my male? There he is. He's a little smaller because when you incubate at different temperatures, they hatch, you know, quicker. And if they hatch quicker, they have more time to eat and grow. So there's my male. Let me put him back. Let him relax. There's my female. They're going to be in here temporarily because um, I'm building an outdoor enclosure for my sulcatas. Once that's the case. They'll go in the sulcata tortoise uh, enclosure I have right now, which is a bigger tub than this. Uh, but for now, this, they're small. This is good enough. They love hay. They love lettuce. So hopefully uh, they'll do well in here and uh, we'll get them up and running. I'm going to put them outside a little bit too. Papa's building me like a, a cage top for this so we can give them some natural UV sunlight as well. These are actually the um, Galapagos nigers. Uh, which are much darker, I guess, subspecies of these Galapagos tortoises. They live for, these things will live for 120 years, you know, they get huge. And uh, so, excited to have them. Hopefully my kids will be as excited to take care of them when I'm no longer here. <laughs> if you're watching this, kids, it's your duty. Continue the legacy.
of my Galapagos tortoises. We have to name them, though. Any name suggestions, put them in the comments below. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed Ty Park's little encounter that I had over there at Iguana Land. You know, he's such a great guy. I, I'm so lucky to have him 20 minutes away. Literally, I can pop over there for an hour or two, have see some awesome animals, ask him a million questions like I always do. I'm always learning. I love to learn. And, you know, sometimes buy stuff from him, <laughs> which is very hard to resist when he's right there. And, you know, just get to see animals other than my own. And uh, I really got a, a nice treat. And I hope you guys, if you're ever in the area, go visit Iguana Land. It is awesome. Tell them Dave Palumbo sent you. <laughs> on that note, guys, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning. Peace.